Hi everyone, and welcome back to another video. Today we are going to be doing a guide for the nation of England in EU4 1.35. But before this video begins, don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel as it helps out the channel tremendously. And now let's jump into England. The nation of England is of course located in the British Isles. It is actually one of the most powerful nations at the start of the game. Not as powerful as let's say Spain or Aragon, specifically Castile, or as Austria or even as France. However, as England, you are in the very unique position to be able to make a lot of money very early due to you possessing one of the strongest trade nodes in the game, that being the English Channel. Along with that, England has actually been updated in EU4 1.35 domination and they got not only a new flag but they also got brand new missions which actually allows you to go down two paths. You can go down the Angevin Empire path, or you can go down the normal path, which has also still been updated into forming Great Britain. And in this guide, I'm going to show you what you can do to achieve both of these, and I'm also going to show you which path I personally like. But before we can do all that, it's time to set up our estates. For the burgers, you want to give out land of commerce, private trade fleets, free enterprise, and indebted to the burgers. For the nobility, you want to give out primacy of the nobility, increase levies, and expand fortifications. For the clergy, we want to give out religious state, oversight by the clergy, clerical education, and religious diplomats. And don't forget to summon the giant and choose whichever agenda you think is best. I'm going to choose this one right here, and don't forget to seize land. As England, we actually have a unique government form called the English Monarchy, which gives us these modifiers, but most notably, it gives us a parliament. So after you assign all of your state stuff, it's time to start a debate in our parliament. Choose whichever one is best for you. The parliament debates have actually been updated in 1.35 and can give you some amazing modifiers here, such as expansion of the bureaucracy, things that decrease culture conversion costs, get a bunch of sailors, get a bunch of stuff for your navy, get a bunch of stuff for your army. However, I'm going to choose this one right here, the Black Act, most notably because it gives you plus three stability right off the bat. And I must tell you that this is not always available at the start of the game. A lot of these are random depending on what is going to happen. So just choose whichever one is best for you. Honestly, I would say choose the one that gives stability as that's free stability and who doesn't like free stability and you are going to lose stability with the War of the Roses anyway. So I'm going to choose the Black Act right here. However, depending on what's available, just choose whichever one you think is best. So select it here. And if you don't know the way the parliament works is you just have to give some bribes out to politicians, kind of like in real life. So just choose which one is best. I'm going to placate the clergy. I'm going gonna lose those 59 sailors and I'm just gonna give some of this admin power and there we go we got plus three stability very nice you also are going to get this pop-up called too few seats in parliament don't worry if you just let time pass the game will automatically assign some seats anyway however if you want to assign them manually for whatever reason just assign them in the provinces that have the most dev as by assigning parliament seats it gives these really nice modifiers so if you want to do that just make sure they have a lot of dev for your starting allies as england i recommend allying castile as england we actually start allied to portugal so this is something very important is i would recommend recommend allying Castile and Austria. Now, if Castile rivals Portugal, you can either restart, or if you don't want to restart, then break the alliance with Portugal. The alliance with Portugal is okay, it's not necessary, and if it is going to hinder you from allying someone bigger like Castile or Aragon, then definitely feel free to break that alliance. Since Castile has not rivaled Portugal, I can keep that alliance, so I'm just going to go ahead and rival Castile, and once a day has passed, I'm going to go ahead and rival Austria. And for your rivals as England, I recommend of course, rivaling people who have rivaled you back, but most importantly, make sure you rival France and Scotland. You can pretty much rival anyone else here. If Burgundy doesn't rival you, then definitely try to get an alliance and royal marriage with them, as it is possible for you as England to get the Burgundian inheritance, but most of the time, Burgundy is going to rival you, so don't worry too much about that. We're going to have all of France as a PU anyway, so it doesn't really matter, but getting the Burgundian inheritance is just a nice bonus. Unfortunately, I can't do that in my game. You probably won't be able to do that in your game, so just go ahead and rival Burgundy back. For your starting advisors, I recommend either a morale of armies or discipline guy. I have a morale guy, so I'm going to take him right here. For your diplo advisor, ideally a diplo rep or trade efficiency. This guy is half price, so I'm going to take the diplo rep guy. And for your admin advisor, ideally anything that reduces inflation or unrest. This inflation guy is level two, so I'm going to take this unrest guy. And don't forget to take this decision called formalized separation of powers. It just gives you some extra stuff with your parliament. Don't take this right here as it's not really that good. 
As England, not only do you start very soon in the game with the War of the Roses, you also start with an event called the Surrender of Maine, where basically you can choose to give this province called Maine back to France in exchange for your truce. If you refuse to give this province back to France, they will declare war on you. However, it will actually be reversed where France will be the defender and you'll be the aggressor. France will be able to call in all of their allies and you might be able to call in one or two of your allies. Sometimes Castile will join. However, if you are a newer player, then I would recommend actually taking this province of Maine and going over to Provence and telling them that you want to sell this province to them. Usually they'll accept for a small amount of money. In this case, they'll actually just take it for free, which is unfortunately. But even if you can't get some money, sell it back to either Provence or Brittany. Let's see with Brittany. As you can see, Brittany would also take it for free. So I'm just going to go ahead and sell this back to Provence. The reason you want to do this is because if you continue to possess this province, see, we can get like 10 decks out of this. If you continue to possess this province, the French will, of course, declare war on you. And honestly, if you are a skilled player, then I'm sure you can beat them. However, like I said, this guide is made for newer players. And if you're someone who can go ahead and fight France really without giving main back, then you probably don't need a guide. But this guy is made for people who might be playing England for the first time in 1.35. And like I said, just just sell made back to Provence and you will be able to complete this mission called the Hundred Years War, which I'll show you what this mission does in just a second. Now, something that has been added in EU4 1.35 is this new thing here. Now, not the Hundred Years War, but in fact, this mission that allows you to choose two paths. You can either choose between the British missions, which will allow you to form Great Britain, or you can choose the Angevin missions, which allow you to basically annex all of France. However, you can not form Great Britain with that mission tree, so do keep in mind. And like I said, you can choose, you can choose the British missions where it'll give you minus two national unrest and some dev costs, or you can choose this one, we cannot abandon our Angevin claim, where it'll give you a force union CB on France and a bunch of claims in Champagne and the France area. I'm going to choose this bottom one right here as number one, it's new, and number two, I do think it is the most fun for both new and experienced players alike. If you want, and you want to just form Great Britain, then there's nothing wrong with taking this part. The Great Britain mission tree has also been revamped and has a lot of flavor as well. However, I'm going to choose We Cannot Abandon Our Angevin Claim. And a couple months after the game starts, you're going to get this looming disaster called the War of the Roses. Don't worry, don't panic. It's going to happen regardless of what you do. I'm going to show you how you manage this disaster and how you can come out of it stronger than ever. But for now, what we're going to go ahead and do is after completing this mission called the Hundred Years War, you want to complete this this next mission called Raise an Army, where this will give you claims on all the British region and also give you claims and a subjugation CB on Scotland. So in order to do that, it's very easy. You just need to have your army size of at least 80% of the force limit. So just build a couple of regiments in each of these armies here and go to these Merc stacks and you can hire pretty much whichever one you want. I'm going to just hire the cheapest one, which is the free company. And once you do that, you should actually go over your force limit. And there we go. After hiring that Merc stack, you don't even have to hire those extra regiments that I said in the armies, it just helps make your army a little bit stronger. You can complete this mission called Raise an Army, which will give you a subjugation CB on Scotland, which is really nice. But more importantly, it'll actually give you claims on not only all of Scotland, but all of Ireland, which is where we're going to be expanding first. And now it is time to declare your first war. Now, your first war is going to be against these little Irish miners. We got claims on them through completing this mission called Raise an Army. So just go ahead and attack them. Choose whichever miner has the least annoying alliance network. In my case, it is actually Lannister here, and they're just allied to Offaly. So just go ahead and co-belligerent whoever they're allied to. I'm going to show you which peace deal you should take at the end of this war. And so for your peace deal with Lannister or whichever Irish miner you're going to be fighting, whether you're fighting two or three, just make sure that you vassalize at least one of them. Now, the reason you want to do that is because you want to reduce the unrest in Ireland. So if you vassalize one of these Irish miners and you feed them all of Ireland, you're still going to be able to complete your mission tree, but it will significantly reduce the unrest since all of these provinces are Irish and Catholic. And if you hold them, you're going to have to deal with constant rebellions and constant uprisings by the Irish here. So I recommend instead of just holding all of this yourself and not only dealing with the rebellions but also having to spend advent points with it instead i recommend just vassalizing one of these irish miners it doesn't really which one you vassalize they're pretty much all the same so just vassalize one of the irish miners 
of course, annex them, but then release them from your diplomatic stream, which I'll show you how to do. So you don't get that penalty or forced vassalization and you won't have to spend the diplo points. So just go ahead. I'm taking both of these guys. I'm just going to feed it all back to Lannister anyway. So just go ahead and fully annex these nations and then release one of them as your vassal. And of course, take all of their money. And once you hold these provinces, go ahead and create a subject. I'm just going to go ahead and release Lannister, create a subject, and just feed them all of these provinces that you get here in Ireland. And what you want to be doing for all of these Irish miners is just attacking them and fully annex them. See if you can co-belligerate people. Keep in mind, you want to be feeding these provinces to your vassal. So co-belligering someone on the other side of Ireland really is not good. It really doesn't make anything go any faster. Uh, if you want, you can still co-belligerate them, but you won't be able to feed it to your vassal anyway, so do keep that in mind. We don't want to have more than one vassal in Ireland. We just want to have one, as that'll take up the Diplo slots. So just co-belligerate whoever you can. I'm just going to co-belligerate these guys, even though I can't take them. And this is going to be the same pattern that you're going to be doing for all of these Irish miners. I'm not going to show you the thing for all of them, since it's the same thing. It's just you attack them, co-belligerate someone if you can, and fully annex them. And do this while you're waiting for the looming disaster of the War of the Roses to tick up. However, keep in mind, once this disaster fires, you are going to need most of your armies, if not all of them, back on the English mainland to help deal with the rebels. And by this point in the game, you will get this event called the War of the Roses, where basically you can choose between the Lancaster and the House of York. I would recommend choosing whichever one gives you the most stats. The stats are random. Sometimes the Yorkists are better. Sometimes the Lancastrians are better. Uh, the spread is actually different, but the total amount of points is the same. So I'm just going to choose the Lancaster since I like their mana spread the most. However, it really depends. Just choose whichever one gives you the most mana points. In my case, I'm going to choose Philip the First. And like I said before, you are going to need to pull most of your armies back to the mainland in order to fight these rebels. These rebel stacks are actually quite numerous and quite large and also quite powerful. So do watch out when you're fighting them. Just group your armies up together and you should have no problem. Usually around this time in the game, you're going to get this decision here called Designate Calais as the staple port. Just go ahead and do this. You'll lose a little bit of admin power, but this province here, assuming that you keep a hold of Calais, will become an absolutely amazing trade province. And once you kill all of the rebel stacks, you will be able to get this pop-up called the End of the War of the Roses. It's going to give you a bunch of prestige and some much-needed stability. And once the War of the Roses is over, you will complete this mission called War of the Roses. It will give you some stability, minus 10 aggressive expansion impact, which is very powerful, and some nobility loyalty equilibrium. Shortly after the War of the Roses is over, you will get this pop-up called the Rise of a Dynasty where you can basically choose between keeping the dynasty that you chose, so either the Lancasters or the Yorks, and if you do that, you will get a bunch of unrest in all of your provinces, pretty much. Or you can select the bottom option. It is time for peace. Let us join our two houses together in marriage. We'll get some admin power, and Henry Tudor, the historical Tudor, will become the heir. It really is up to you. Uh, there really is no wrong way. However, do keep in mind that your ruler will often start out as a little bit old. So if you want to risk not having an heir, then I recommend taking the top option. This unrest is fine. It's only for five years and it's really not too bad. However, if you don't want to risk not having an heir and if you are a newer player who might not know how to manage the unrest or the rebellions, then I recommend choosing the bottom option. Since this guide is made for new players, I'm also going to choose the bottom option. And after the War of the Roses is over, it's time to continue your conquests into Ireland. I pieced out with Ormond here. I didn't show that peace deal because it was just the same as all the other ones. So just keep attacking these guys. Sometimes they will be allied to Scotland, which is really good. And once I find the Irish miner that is allied to Scotland, I'll go ahead and show you what to do with them. But for now, just go ahead and keep attacking these guys. See if you can co-belligerate them. In this case, I can. And go for it. And once you meet this criteria right here, you can go ahead and complete this mission called Royal Core. It just basically makes some of the estates lose some land. And now it is time to see if you can force Scotland to annul their alliance with France. Oftentimes you can do this as many times Scotland will ally at least one or two of the Irish miners. They do that in an effort to try and stop you from conquering it, but the AI doesn't understand that you can just attack them and then devastate Scotland and make them annul their alliance with France. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. I'm going to attack Kildara here. In my game, they're actually allied to two Irish miners. 
So I'm just going to go ahead and attack Kildara. Do not co belligerate Scotland as that would call in France. To so just attack Kildara, siege down Scotland, and make them annul their alliance with France. For your first government reform as England, I recommend strengthen noble privileges for the extra manpower. And so for your peace deal with Scotland, if they're still allied with France, of course, just make them break their alliance with France. And if they're allied to, let's say, Ulster or something like that, you can go ahead and make them break their alliance. We don't really want to take any money or war reps as we want to be able to attack them or that CB or we can make them a subject as soon as possible. So just do that, make them annul their alliance with France and anyone else if you'd like to do that as well. And of course, like all of the other Irish miners, just take them, fully annex them and take all of their money. And now it is time to declare likely what is going to be your hardest war, at least in the earlier game. And that war is going to be against France. We want to declare this war against France as soon as possible, as the longer you wait to fight France, the more powerful that they become. They complete sections of their mission tree, they annex vassals, and they start to get their big morale bonus, which is called the Elan. If you fight France very early like this, they won't have that many provinces, and they won't have their Elan. So, make sure that by this point in the game, as long as your two allies of Castile and Austria will join, make sure that you attack France. Now, this is an important distinction that I want to make. Attack France, not for the conquest seat, but for the force union as from the engine mission tree we want to get a pu under france so we can basically own pretty much all of France in a very short amount of time. So attack France, make sure at least one of your allies will join and attack France for the Force Union CB on Paris. Don't be too scared about this war. As long as you keep track of your armies, keep them grouped together and call for help for your allies, you should be okay. For your first idea group as England, I recommend taking diplomatic ideas. Now you may be wondering why should you be taking diplomatic ideas? Well, you are going to want to use these diplomatic ideas to keep France loyal. You're going to want to be improving with France constantly, and although your mission tree makes that way easier, you still are going to struggle with keeping France both loyal and keeping them having a positive opinion of you. And diplomatic ideas helps out with that. It also helps out substantially with the aggressive expansion. And through the Andrian mission tree, a lot of your conquests are going to be on the European continent. Remember, we're not taking the Great Britain mission tree, where we kind of just focus on our own devices. Instead, we're taking the Andrian mission tree, which which focuses a lot on conquest, as you can see, into Italy, into the lowlands, into Burgundy, and things like that. So having diplomatic ideas is going to make that a lot easier. So for your first idea group, take diplomatic ideas. And so for your peace deal with France, make sure you go into the treaties tab and select union with France. What you also want to do is take your core in Armagnac. And the reason you want to do that is because it's your core. And in order to complete this mission later down the road to shatter the French nobility, we are going to have to own about 20 provinces here in the French region. So take your core in Armagnac, take all of the French money, make sure there is a union with France, and go ahead and send it. And as you can see, we now have a personal union with France, and we can go ahead and complete this mission called Seize France's Throne. It's going to give us a bunch of prestige, and if we're at 100 prestige, it'll convert all of that into excess mana power, which is huge. But the most important thing here is that it is going to make improving with France and keeping France loyal a bit easier than it was in previous patches, although with diplomatic ideas it's going to be even easier. After forcing France into a union, you of course want to send a diplomat to start improving with France immediately, and after you do that, you want to take this national decision called the French-English Reconciliation Act. This will give you some extra prestige and some extra mana, and it'll also make France a lot easier to keep loyal. So go ahead and take this, and once you do that and you're able to do that, it will present itself as a Parliament Act. So as you can see here, you can go ahead and do the normal things to do with the Parliament. So give out all these other little things here. And there you go. Now you have the French English Reconciliation Act. And now it is time to finish up fully annexing Ireland. Just go ahead and do what you've been doing the entire time. Full annexation, co people if you can. I can't co them since Scotland would join and I'm trying to wait for that truce to be over with them. So I'm just still going to annex Thormon, but just not co -belligerated. Don't worry and just go in and attack them. And once you fully conquer Ireland, whether you hold it yourself or not, you can complete this mission called Conquer Ireland. It's going to give you some admin power and some wonderful goods produce modifiers. 
And after fighting all of those Irish wars, as well as the war against the French, you likely have quite a bit of aggressive expansion with your neighbors as with people within the HRE. So it's time to chill for about five years or so, let the aggressive expansion tick down and get ready to attack Scotland. You can, of course, attack Scotland by this point. However, if you do that, you really won't be able to subjugate them or take most of their provinces since the aggressive expansion is ridiculously high. And once your truce is over with Scotland, and once you have allowed aggressive expansion, to tick down a bit, it is time to declare your war against Scotland. You want to declare your war against Scotland for the subjugation CB. In the event that you are declaring on Scotland later than I am and the subjugation CB has expired, which is quite possible, especially if your AE is pretty high, then just go ahead and declare for a conquest war. You will not be able to annex Scotland outright in one war. It will take two wars. However, if you are using the conquest CB, then just of course declare for that one and take as much as you can. However, if like me, you still can use a subjugation CB, then of course use a subjugation CB and attack Scotland. For your tier 3 government reform as England, I recommend taking expanded royal court. For your peace deal with Scotland, what you want to go ahead and take is of course make them your vassal, select the English vassal option here. Now one of the things that is unfortunate is if Scotland has not annexed their starting vassal of the Isles, then you will almost certainly be dragged into a war along with them. Now in order to complete our mission right here which acquires us to subjugate Scotland you or Scotland will unfortunately have to own all of these provinces here unfortunately taking Scotland in a peace deal such as this making them your vassal will of course allow you to make them your vassal however you cannot fully annex the isles so you will have to go back for a second war against them so just take either of these provinces and take all of the Scottish money one of the things that you should be doing by now that I forgot to mention is make sure that you improve with your vassal of Lannister up to 190 relations and start annexing them as soon as possible. We want to do this so we can complete our mission that involves Ireland. And once you finish annexing your Irish vassal, if like me you had one, then make sure you take this decision here for the parliament called the Crown of Ireland Act. Click it and open your parliament and you'll be able to do this debate here called the Crown of Ireland, where basically it will give you an option, which I'll show you in just a minute. So just go ahead and give out some of these privileges here and I'll show you what happens and there we go. As you can see, we get this event called the Kingdom of Ireland. Basically, you get two options. The first one is Ireland should remain under our direct rule where you get these modifiers here as well as some admin points. The second one is Ireland will be released as a subject nation. Honestly, it really is up to you which one you would like to take. This one gives some end of game modifiers. However, this will basically release all of Ireland and make them under a PU. It really is up to whichever one that you want to take. There really is no right or wrong option. Personally, I prefer the top one, but if you would like, you can take the bottom option that extra one diplo relation and that yearly prestige until the end of the game is really nice so it really is up to you i'm going to take the top option just because i prefer it for your second idea group as england i recommend taking quality ideas now we're going to need the quality ideas to buff up our army so that we can fight the other european powers as you follow along any of your mission tree whether you decided to take the great britain mission tree or you decided to go the engine mission tree like i did you're going to be fighting some major european powers. So for your second idea group, as England, make sure you take quality ideas. And by this point in the game, your nation should look a little bit something like this. We have fully integrated Ireland, and we basically have vassalized Scotland minus this one little annoying Isles province. We, of course, fought France, and that is your hardest war at the beginning of the game, but we successfully fought them and defended them off. Not only did we fight France and win, we actually now have France as our own personal union member. So that that is our greatest rival in Europe wiped out before the year 1500. We have allied both Castile, Austria, and remained our alliance with Portugal. Remember, if the Portuguese alliance at the start of the game is preventing you from allying Castile, then feel free to break the Portuguese alliance. We absolutely do not need them. However, having this extra nation as an ally will always help. For our first two ideas, we took Diplomatic to help with the improved relations and the Diplo rep for our big personal unit member and our potentially other personal unit member 
favor of Ireland if you chose to take Ireland. For our second idea group, we chose quality to buff up our armies. For your third idea group, honestly, I recommend taking infrastructure ideas. The policy with diplomatic there and even with quality pairs really well, which it actually allows you, at least with diplomatic ideas, gives you plus one diplo wrap and minus 10 years of personal union integration, which is really nice, especially for France. And this is a new idea group that has been added in 1.35, by the way, and gives all of these amazing modifiers the most amazing one being the movement speed which is really nice for your fourth idea group you can take exploration if or expansion if you would like however i'd recommend taking trade or if you don't feel like doing trade then definitely take exploration ideas or doing the colony for your fifth sixth seventh and eighth idea groups as always it is ultimately up to you and how your game is going this is what we took for our first three government reforms for your tier four government reform i recommend taking maintain balance of power for tier five i recommend recommend taking sustained discipline or tier six i recommend taking either general estates or aristocratic court or tier seven i recommend taking meritocratic recruitment for tier eight i recommend taking curtail the burgers for tier nine i recommend taking this one right here for tier 10 if you're struggling with gov cap then take let samoa however if for some reason you're not struggling with gov cap then take divine right and for tier 11 take right to petition this is what we took so far for our mission tree the mission tree in u4 1.35 has been completely revamped for england and allows you to take two paths either the great britain mission tree path or the Andrewan Empire path. In this guide, I chose the Andrewan Empire as that is what a lot of people are taking, especially new players, since it was added in the most recent update. And I wanted to show you how you go down that path it is honestly probably the most fun out of all the paths. And I'm definitely looking forward to continue to play this game. As you continue on with your nation, you of course will take this province from the Isles if Scotland did not annex them. You, of course, will continue to expand to Europe. Keep in mind, you have a bunch of claims in the French region and into Burgundy, and you also have claims that France has built up as well. So you'll go ahead and continue to use those. You will continue to progress down your mission tree, eventually annexing France once you meet all the requirements. And once you do that, you will absolutely start to snowball and be able to destroy anyone on the European continent. Along with that, you can also start colonizing and have a massive colonial empire along with having your great European empire if you choose to take exploration ideas however you really do not need exploration ideas to be a successful nation as england if you take the andrian empire path that path will basically allow you to become an absolute powerhouse on the european continent by the way if you like england and you like this england game i actually have been streaming england over on youtube still here on youtube but i've been streaming it on a live stream i try to do this every saturday so if you want to check that out, make sure that you go and check out the live stream. But for now, thank you very much for watching. And don't forget to leave a like on the video and subscribe to the channel. Another thing that I wanted to add it, I recently have a Discord. I now have a Discord. And if you wish to join the Discord and join an amazing community of EU4 players and as well as other Paradox game players, and if you have any questions or you want to ask me or just contact me directly, don't forget to join the Discord down below. It's going to be a link in the description. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.